We were originally designed by God to be very spiritually sensitive, to be able to interface with the knowledge of God, the wisdom of God very easily. Adam and Eve in the garden had a very unusual relationship with God, no barriers, no limitations to the wisdom that was there. We don't know whether God gave prohibitions after the fall. We know that by the Tower of Babel, there was a very clear attempt on the part of man to access knowledge that he should not. And subsequently, in the Mosaic Law, God laid down very strict boundaries, particularly relating to astrology. There is a body of evidence that suggests rather strongly that there is theology written in the planets and that the study of astrology is not all rubbish, but that there is knowledge of the future that can be accrued through certain studies. While that knowledge is there and God acknowledges that it is there, he vigorously prohibits us from going after it. In other words, there is a boundary, there is a limitation to the knowledge that we are permitted to have. Having said that, we go to a term which is the psychic door. There is a barrier between the natural world and the spiritual realm with a knowledge that is there. That psychic door apparently is located in the pineal gland in your brain. It is the gland that parallels the work of the servant gift. It is the gland that the occult community calls the third eye. And it is possible through some training and through some act of your will and some participation with witchcraft to open that psychic door intentionally so that you can then begin to see in the spirit realm things that you could not see before, things that you desire to see, things that are forbidden for us to see. So the psychic door exists. It can be manipulated. It can be opened. God has directed us not to open it. Now here's a case study. I'm changing the illustrations, but the principle remains the same. There was a lady who called me quite a number of years ago with extreme concern because she had what is known as prescience. Pre, meaning before, science, meaning knowledge. Prescience, being able to see before. She would be minding her own business and would have a picture flash through her mind of an accident about to happen. A little boy with a blue shirt on a red trike riding out in front of a car and getting run over. Three days later, she saw it happen. This happened three times in a row where she saw pictures of total strangers being hugely wounded in a very uh, specific way and those things came about. She called me because she had a fourth picture of something that was about to happen and she was desperate to know when and where and how she should intervene in order to keep this from happening. That is an example of somebody who has had their psychic door opened. Now this woman was a believer. The door was not opened through her witchcraft, it was not opened through her sin or her desire to cross over the boundary. It was obviously a generational issue. In this case, as in many cases, it was druidic. When the druids stopped receiving their revelation from God, they began to pursue it from the dark world and they became experts, incredible experts, at opening the psychic door very, very widely and at nurturing subsequent generations so that through their dedication to the dark arts, the children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren 
were conceived and born with a psychic door already open, much more malleable, and they could go further into the dark realms of forbidden knowledge than their parents. Consequently, 2,000 years later, we have many, many people whose psychic door has been opened, and they don't know it. Generation after generation, they are able to see things they don't want to see, know things they don't want to know, and the psychic door being opened is more of a torment than it is a blessing. And I want to state vigorously that not everything that we call discernment is God's will or God's intent. The ability to see, to know, to recognize the demonic is not always God's desire. I will give you three illustrations with children. There were children from a very wounded, demonized family line. They were somewhere in the vicinity of three to six years old, I'm going to say. They had discernment of the demonic, although they didn't have language for it. What the parents came to me about was terror. The children were absolutely afraid all the time. They were afraid to be out of the sight of their mother. It was an extreme issue. They slept with her. She could not go to the bathroom without them in the room because they absolutely would not be left alone. I proposed that they had discernment that was inappropriate, that the psychic door was open, that they were seeing the demonic realm or were being tormented by the demonic realm. We did some work to cleanse the home. We did some work to cleanse the generational lines. And we went to the bedroom and applied a drop of anointing oil in one of the corners of the bedroom window and asked God to seal even the window so that the demonic activity on the neighbor's property could not be seen through the window by the children. Then mother opened the blinds to the bedroom and waited. The kids came home from the babysitter. We had had them removed from the house while we were doing that. And she waited to see what would happen. For the first time in their lives, the two kids went into the bedroom that they shared, sat down on the floor, and began to play with toys without mother being present and with a window open. Prior to that, even with their mother, they would not go in the room as long as the uh, blinds were open because they were so tormented by the demonic that was outside. So their discernment was inappropriate. Their discernment was absolutely not a gift from the Holy Spirit. It was psychic door open, and they were being tormented by the demonic. I had another case with a newborn baby. The baby was not thriving. The baby cried a lot of the time. The baby couldn't eat well, and they went to the doctor, tried a number of things, but the biological things were not working, and mother was getting worn to a frazzle by the continual torment that the child was in child was out of my area. Eventually, I went to that area and met the mother and the child. And when she walked in the door with her four-month-old son, I immediately knew what the problem was. He was on her shoulder, and he was like this, just, just extremely rigid, tense, and, and his eyes were going everywhere. He, he could not relax. She tried to nurse him, and he couldn't nurse more than 30 seconds at a time without having to uh, detach and, and look around and see what was going on. I knew that there was visual discernment, that he was seeing the demonic, and the demonic was having a fine time putting on a show for him and tormenting him. We spoke to his spirit. We asked God to cleanse the family line, to remove the sin, rebellion, and iniquity, and to close the psychic door. We spoke to him, even though he's four months old, I just called his spirit to attention, spoke in simple English. Let's call his name Johnny. I said, Johnny, um, I'm so sorry for what has happened to you. Um, this wasn't the way God intended. You're not supposed to see those things. We've asked God to close the door so you don't have to see all of the ugliness of the demonic realm. Then I spoke peace to him, and I directed his spirit to take dominion over his soul. 
His mother continued to work with him in that way, and within a couple of days, he was a fairly calm baby. Within a couple of months, you would never know that he had undergone all of that torment. The discernment was not discernment from God. It was the psychic door opened. Now, a beautiful picture of how to do it right is a child that I ministered to in the womb repeatedly. And about two weeks before she was born, God instructed me to talk to her about her visual discernment and said, you are going to be able to see in the spirit realm, child. This was a gift from God. And God wanted the first fruits experience to be beautiful. God explained to me, and I explained to her, that when she was born, there was going to be a beautiful angel standing off to the left of her mother's feet, about three feet, and she was to look at the angel. God wanted to imprint on her physical eyes and on her organic brain something of vast beauty when she first came into the world. I also gave the parents a head up, heads up and encouraged them to cleanse the labor and delivery room and be sure there were no uninvited guests there. They did. Child was born cesarean section. They took the child away, cleaned her up, sewed up the mom and eventually brought the baby back to the mother. And as I remember the story, they brought the little girl back to the mother and placed her at the mother's left breast with a head here. And the child would have nothing of the breast. She turned her head to look at the angel that was over there because she'd understood my instructions and she believed and she followed. And in her infancy, it was clear to everybody that she had incredible visual discernment. She would lie in her bassinet and look up into the heavenlies and just laugh and giggle. We have no idea what God was showing her, but whatever it was, was beautiful. That is a case of God giving immense discernment. God chose to open her psychic door in such a way that she could see into the beautiful part of the spiritual realm without being tormented by the uglies. When the devil opens a psychic door, when a child has inherited a generational uh, psychic demonic package, the things that they see are going to be torment and misery rather than freedom. So I would encourage you with any children that are having night terrors to Ask God if there is Druidic in the family line to repent of the iniquities of the Druids, to cleanse the family line to that child and the subsequent generations, and then to ask God to close that child's psychic door, to seal it, and to only allow the child to see what the Holy Spirit wants to reveal to the human spirit. Now, there is a second application to this issue of the psychic door being opened, and it is one that is far more serious than most people give it credit for, and that is the prophetic movement in America today. There are many individuals whose psychic door is open, and they also have the manifestation gift of prophesying. What that means is they can get accurate data from two sources. On Sunday, they receive revelation from the Holy Spirit of God. Their prophetic gift is activated, and they're receiving true truth and sharing it with people. On Tuesday, they may be receiving revelation through their psychic door. And hear me well. It can be equally true truth. The demonic knows the future quite well. But coming through the psychic door, coming from a demonic source, this truth is defiled. And when it is delivered to somebody as a word from the Lord, when really it's a word from the enemy, it has a hugely defiling characteristic to it. Some of you right now are cringing because you remember receiving prophetic words, and at the very time you received them, you were conflicted because your spirit said, ooh, there's something very bad about that. Your soul said, yes, but this is the great prophet so-and-so who has been so validated and attested in so many different ways. Well, your soul was right and your spirit was right, 
this great prophet has a psychic door that is open, and some of the time he's prophesying through the Spirit of God, and some of the time he's prophesying through an unclean spirit. We have tracked this in a tragic way in a number of different churches where spiritual leaders with a psychic door that's open, and I'm talking specifically prophets, will come to a church, they will minister to the church. This is very overtly a prophet invited to walk in the office of prophet, to prophesy into the future of the church, etc. Everybody enjoys the ministry. It looks good, smells good, sounds good. And for reasons I can't explain, it takes about six months for that virus to hatch. And about six months down the road, the leadership team is in turmoil. The church has lost its sense of direction. Finances are down. There's just a clash, a misalignment, a frustration at every level as a church can't get traction at any point to be able to go forward. That very likely is the result of a so-called prophetic word that came from a prophet whose psychic door was open. So those of you that walk in the prophetic, I would plead with you to be very, very meticulous about cleansing the druidic influence in your family line and any other branch of the occult that has practiced opening the psychic door. The gypsies are another that have done that. I would ask God to close the psychic door permanently. And then if you have any doubts, if you have walked in the psychic realm before you were a believer, if you have overtly in your own generation gone that direction, you may wish to consider a six-month fast from prophesying. A six-month period of time where you just absolutely immerse yourself in the Word of God, that day and night you have it playing around you. You memorize it, you meditate on it, and you ask God to do a magnificent work of sanctifying your spirit, of cleansing you from any trace of the druidic, and of making you so extremely attuned to the voice of the Spirit through the grounding of the Word of God that you could never again be deceived into accidentally delivering a word through your psychic door, that even though it is true, may carry defilement with it because of the source. I want to be very blunt and challenge the prophetic movement in America. I am a prophet. I'm not only a prophet by redemptive gift, I walk in the manifestation gift of prophesying, and I hold the office of prophet unashamedly. I am also one of the foremost critics of the prophetic movement because there is so much prophesying from the soul, and there is a generous amount of prophesying with an open psychic door. I do not understand how so many individuals can receive so many prophetic words that are obviously patently wrong. Thus and thus will happen by such and such a date. You'll be married by February. The boy, the baby will be a boy. I mean, there are thousands of absolutely documented errors in the prophetic movement, yet there is still very little inclination to hold prophets accountable for their words. There's a wholesale rush on the part of a large section of the body of Christ to get yet another prophetic word. And I think that we are playing into the enemy's hands by being so loose in the handling of the prophetic, especially since so many Americans have been contaminated by their druid druidic forefathers who have opened the psychic door and left it open so that we deliver true words from a defiled source and we defile well-meaning innocent people who come to us to hear from the Lord. I would urge a much more conservative approach to walking in the prophetic 
And I would urge that anybody that walks in words of knowledge and the prophetic, that they seriously investigate juridic in their family line and be sure that the psychic door is closed and stays closed.